It's finally time for book club, and we are going to start with the Not Wedding Planner. So it's got a ton of really great information, and look at that. Look at all those wedding colors. I already picked out some colors for that. Got some really beautiful pictures for inspiration, and you know, a timeline, and top tips, and there's always like 1 through 10 in front of everything, and guest list and invitations, and to-do lists, and it's just like really exciting to like go through it all and the dress, top wedding dress tips. There's a ton of really great information in this and I would really suggest it to anyone who is newly engaged who is doing their own sort of planning for their wedding because I'm not going to hire anyone, I'm not going to pay extra money for that. I'm going to find the best deals, the best prices, the best places and like I was already a maid of honor and a bridesmaid so I do kind of know a little about it as my mom would say. So I'm going to do a lot of DIY stuff and a lot of like making my own version of like fancy things for cheap, you know, that's all what I'm about. I'm going to do a whole video on wedding planning once I have more, you know, more information to tell you. And yeah, I just really wanted to show you when it comes down to the wedding wire, which is actually the website that I used to, um, I'm going to like, this is going to be another limb or something. I, I can't even imagine. I have had the curly girl handbook for so long and I've been needing to make a video for so, so, so long. A lot of really cute things in here and I really want to try them out and there's a bunch of information on how to wash and style there's all these hairstyles I want to do like how can I how can I say I'm like running out of hair Ooh, I'm gonna try this pin up curl hairstyle for next time the first video I'm doing this and I'm doing one of those you better hold me to that I, I love this book I need to read it more it's just like literally the curly girl Bible it has all kinds of curls from 2a to 4c it has all different kinds of information it has curl confessions where people were talking about how they were like mistreating their curls or heating them up or straightening too much and I can totally relate with that like I'm really bad about it so it is the curly girl handbook by Lorraine Massey Oh my gosh, guys, I am totally in love with Tanya Burr. I had to work so hard to get this book. I had to order it like three times, kept getting canceled by the vendor. I was so upset. It's so hard to get books published in the UK. But this book is just absolutely gorgeous. She talks all about her YouTube life and all of her favorite like makeup and hair tricks. And she has such beautiful photography in here. She's got like recipes and stuff in here I want to try. I need you to just sit down and read this whole thing because she's just seriously, I want to be her. Like I want to be Tanya Bird. Definitely, if you can get your hands on this, it was so hard to get a hold of it, but I finally got it, finally tell, told you guys about it. It's so amazing. And now we have Baking with Mary Berry. <laughs> this was actually a birthday present from my friend Sarah Jane, and she works with me. And she actually has a channel, you should check her out. She's on my recommended channels to the side. Mary Berry is a very famous British chef and pastry maker. She is a judge on the show with the Great British Baking Show. Sarah Jane actually introduced me to it. And um, in the show they make all these incredible pies and tarts and cakes and all these kinds of crazy baking things. And there's a bunch of recipes that were in here. Like, look at this. Like, I seriously want to make these. Coffee eclairs. Oh my god. Marbled blend coffee cake. Come on. Like, Sarah Jane, you knocked it out of the park, girlfriend. Oh my gosh, I love it. The photography is so beautiful. Sarah Jane and I are going to do a video, and we're going to make one of these things. So stay tuned for that. I love it. I'm so excited. And finally, I have got three books here that I have to show you. I read these two, and I'm, I just started reading this one today. And I have, like, another ten books over here that I could talk to you about, but I had to cut it down. So I loved Me Before You. I seriously thought it was so sad. Like, it was such a sad book. I kind of thought maybe that was going to happen. Amelia Clark from Game of Thrones is going to play Louisa, who is the main character. And that's like the perfect casting. I totally can see her as Louisa the character. And um, it's about a man who is a quadriplegic, and she sort of becomes his caretaker. Not, not really like medical caretaker, but he she decides to try and like make him his life better and like try and take him out to things and basically like be a companion like a friend and then they fall in love and you know things happen 
But it's a really good book, and Jojo Moyes is such a great author. She actually tweeted me back. I, okay, after I finished this book, I was literally crying so hard. I tweeted, just finished me before you, so much ugly crying. <laughs> and then she tweeted me back like a day later. She was like, oh, I hope you feel better. I was like, oh my god, I couldn't believe it. I seriously want to read more of her books. She's got another one called One Plus One. I want to read that one really bad. Okay, now I just finished this book like two days ago. It's called The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. And it's kind of like magical realism, so everyone sort of operates under the idea that magic is real, like in the circus. It becomes about the love between Marco and Celia and how they're supposed to be like enemies during this duel, like their whole lives. And it's set in this amazing circus. And it's like the night circus and all these uh, amazing rooms and tents are like completely surreal and magical. And this the writing and like the envisioning, imagining of this book is like amazing. I thought it was so well written and then there's like a sort of second person narrative like as if you were a person in the circus that sort of jumps throughout the book. And oh my god, it's so amazing. I love it. I kind of felt a little left down at the end. Like I kind of like they built up this duel so much. Um, but at the same time, it was really great ending, and I kind of sensed it from the, like, the middle that they were going to do that, and, you know, uh, that's my curse. I'm, like, kind of cursed with knowing what's going to happen in books, because I, I write books, and I read books all the time. But anyway, my final book here is called The Glass Castle by Jeanette Walls. And this is a autobiography of her life, and I've only read about 12 pages so far, the first sort of like essay. It starts out where she's in a cab in New York City and she turns to look out the window and she sees her mom rummaging through a dumpster. And it's just such good writing and I keep hearing about it at work and I really want to study how she writes memoir. And she has another book called Half Broke Horses, which I think is about her grandmother uh, who lived on a ranch when she was young. Um, her writing is just so, so sharp and amazing. It's just so, like, in your face. Oh my gosh, and biggest news ever, I got my own end cap at work. Like, oh my gosh, like seriously. So um, my manager asked me if I wanted to sort of run my own end cap and pick all the books and, like, change them periodically. And I was like, oh my god, I would love to do that. And she wanted it to be sort of, like, classics and, like, literary books that most people don't really know about, that I, I know about because I went to college for this. I have a row of short stories with Lori Moore, Alice Munro, Eudora Welty, Flannery O'Connor. I have some by George Saunders, Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man. I have a bunch of Kazuo Ishiguro. I have a bunch of like Beats era poetry on there because I love the Beats. I have classic novels, modern novels, like I have Tender is the Night by Fitzgerald. I have so many good books on there. So leave me your favorite book in the comments below or one that you think should go on my end cap because I would love to have your suggestions. Definitely follow me on Goodreads because I'm trying to read 30 books again this year. Last year I tried to do 50, <laughs> didn't get there, so it's down to 30 about halfway through. I got to 16 books and you can see all the books that I read last year and then you can see that I've read three so far this year and then I finished um, The Paris Wife. Oh yeah, The Paris Wife. So I have um, the audiobook The Paris Wife and I listened to that in my car and I definitely thought it was different. Like I had, I have a different opinion on Hemingway now because it's all about Hemingway and his first wife and how he fell in love with another woman and then another woman and another woman and so it kind of gave me a new outlook on what drove Hemingway and like how he was there in Pamplona in Spain when he wrote All Sun Also Rises and I haven't yet to read that book, I really need to. And um, when I was in Pamplona myself, I really felt like the urge to write, so I can definitely like understand that. Okay, so let me know what you think I should read next. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.